there is one, there are any number of reasons, but there's one reason above all else why I ask him to join us today, because whenever you invite him, you know you get mail saying, why you invite him? Please welcome Minister Louis Farrakhan. Now, let me tell you, there are any number of reasons, there are any number of reasons why I invited the brother minister to be at this table today. But I want to say to you directly that the primary reason I wanted you here today is because I want to hear this for myself, and I wanted to see you when I heard it, and I know we all want to hear it as well. You were very clear two years ago when you said that you were going to take a particular approach to President Obama, to then Senator Obama's campaign. You were going to take a, uh, my, my paraphrasing here, you were going to take a particular approach to his running for the White House because you did not want people to take your words. You didn't want Farrakhan to be used against Barack Obama in his journey toward the White House. And so you took a particular approach. That was two years ago when he said he was running. Now he's been in the White House for a year. So it's been two years that Minister Farrakhan has chosen a particular approach because he did not want to be used by these forces against Barack Obama. Tell me why that is the case, number one. And in a contemporary sense, how do you respond to folk who think that that approach is Farrakhan walking on eggshells, so to speak? Well, uh, first, I want to I wanna thank Dr. Wayne Watson for hosting uh, this. I want to thank uh, Brother Tavis Smiley for gathering us all together and I want to thank everyone that I have heard because you all spoke so beautifully to the problem. Now, to answer your question very quickly, I love black people, and I make no excuses for that. And I'm interested in that which our people want more than what sometimes I think is best for them. In New York, David Dinkins wanted to be mayor. But he knew that in order to be mayor in a city where there was so much Jewish power, he had to pander to that ethnicity. And he beat me up on television over and over again in ads. I could have gone into New York literally and destroyed the brother. <laughs> Excuse me for being very frank. But I felt that black people in New York wanted a black mayor, so I remained quiet. Not because I couldn't defend myself, not because my ego was bruised by what he was saying, but our people in New York wanted a black mayor. They got it. <laughs> And what is the result? At Reverend Jackson's affair one uh, day, Percy Sutton came to me and patted me on my shoulder, the late Percy Sutton, and thanked me for not hurting David Dinkins chances to be mayor. On CNN, I was questioned after I spoke in 2007 about Barack Obama and 
CNN said, well, what do you think about this young man? I said, I think he's brilliant. I think he has fresh ideas. But I'm under no illusion that even if he did become president, that he could change the reality of black suffering in America because when you are running for something, you can say a lot of things. But when you sit in the seat and you feel the energy of electricity putting something on your backside, the forces that surround power is always the real power. That's right. That's right. Mm. <laughs> President Obama does not run this country. Right. President Obama has been chosen to govern white affairs. And if in that process we get something, it won't be because the governing powers want it. It will be because we organized and forced a government to speak to our needs. Now, look. Thank you for the question. You know. I want it clearly said in love yeah. Yeah. that I love my brother. I voted for him. At five o'clock in the morning, I was out there with my wife voting for our brother. I, like you, am very proud that a black man sits in the white house but I also understand very clearly yeah. and we should understand that it is the white house and until we exercise power That's right. to force that house to address our agenda. That's right. That's now remember, our dear sister Julianne Malvo mentioned A. Philip Randolph. Man, that was long time ago. And the cry was jobs, yeah. and justice. Yeah. Right. In the March on Washington in 1963, mm. the cry was mm. jobs mm. And, and justice. justice. Mm. In the 20 year anniversary of the March on Washington, the cry was jobs mm. and, and justice. Mm. Right. We are now in 2010. And, the cry. and what is the cry? Jobs, Jobs and justice. Just. Well, wait a minute. How long, Not long. are you going to sit around begging white people to do for us what we have the power to do for ourselves? I'm quite passionate, so Amen. you all set me off. You know that. <laughs> and I love it. But listen, an agenda is a program, a schedule, a timetable, a plan, a list, a scheme to accomplish a certain result. We have come up with black agendas. 
but we've been looking to the wrong people to fulfill our agenda. If 